I am Carolyn Lucia, the head of school of Fairmont Preparatory Academy, and it is my great honor to welcome you to our 2021 virtual graduation ceremony. Graduates, we know that for those of you unable to join our on-site ceremony, this was not the graduation you imagined when you started high school four years ago. While we know that this virtual graduation is not quite the same as the traditional gathering of classmates, families, and faculty, we want you to feel truly celebrated today. Now, before we begin this commencement ceremony, I do want to say to each of you, Fairmont Preparatory is a better place because you have been here. While the world has continued to grapple with the effects and restrictions of COVID, you all showed your grit and innovative spirit. COVID-19 may have altered how you envisioned the end of your high school experience, but it did not prevent you from pursuing academic achievement or creating opportunities to connect with each other. I know I speak for the entire Fairmont family when I say, we've been in awe of how well this group has navigated the path of these challenging times and come through them even stronger. So bravo to you, Fairmont Prep Class of 2021. Now, please sit back and soak in this moment because you've earned it. Keep your cap on or at least nearby. You will need it at the end of this ceremony. Please place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave it is a bit surreal that I get to deliver this commencement speech to you. As a Fairmont graduate myself 30 years ago, I could not have imagined being in this position or even having sound advice to offer. Wandering back in my mind to the 1990 school year, I recall so many happy memories walking beneath the shade of the enormous Morton Bay fig tree on Maple Street. I cultivated friendships over those years learned from all of my many wonderful and talented teachers, and grew substantially from exposure to the required courses of study. Of course, there were discouraging memories as well. One such memory was competing in the speech festival, which was then our version of debate. I recall how I struggled to articulate my thoughts and speak before an audience of my peers. The audience was very gracious, but I know that my speech and my performance was one of the weakest of the festival. Of course, I didn't win, not even close. Fortunately, however, I didn't let that experience label me or hold me back from future public speaking endeavors. Over time, after the public speaking classes in college and with many dozens of opportunities to stand before large audiences, 
I was able to hone my skills. I now look forward to speaking publicly, an activity that nearly 77% of the population in the United States dread. Like me, you will attempt something new and in some cases, you may fail initially, but if you don't lose sight of your goal, you will find success. According to Denzel Washington, you will fail at some point in your life, accept it. You will lose, you will embarrass yourself, you will suck at something, but embrace it because it is inevitable. Every failed experiment is one step closer to success. You've got to take risks. The year 1990 was a difficult one for me and my family. On June 27th, less than two weeks after my Fairmont graduation, a raging forest fire in the Cleveland National Forest, which abutted our family's 60-acre avocado ranch, nearly burned our home to the ground, almost taking me, my sisters, and dad with it. I credit fast thinking and not sitting still with saving our lives that day. Later that year on Thanksgiving Day, I was in a dirt bike accident that nearly ended my life. I was life flighted by helicopter to UCI Medical Center and eventually recovered from multiple traumatic injuries. Looking back on it now, that year was a watershed moment for me. In other words, a turning point in my life. I had learned and experienced much in years at Fairmont that created in me a firm foundation. That foundation was tested almost immediately. What I learned was that as one survives difficult experiences in their life, they will strengthen and prepare him for the future. Certainly this was the case for me, and the grit and determination that came from those early post-Fairmont years has served me throughout my life. We should never wish for the trials and setbacks in life, but do recognize that as they come, which they invariably do, they will hone, sharpen, and make us stronger. So don't fear them. Several years later, as I approached high school graduation, I recognized a need to move away from some negative relationships in my life as a necessity to qualify for spending two gap years as a missionary in Brazil. Immediately, my social life imploded and I spent the remaining months of senior year without many friends or the normal end of high school social activities. While this seemed horrible at the time, this sacrifice allowed me many experiences that have shaped my adult life more than nearly anything else. Like me, you will sometimes be faced with decisions that will require you to reinvent yourself. Don't be afraid to do this. The experiences and trials in your lives will lead to success, which for each of us looks different. For me, success is my 18-year-old marriage to my wife, Amber, my four children who are all making their own way here at Fairmont, being asked by my father to replace him as president of Fairmont, and seeing each of you Fairmont graduates moving successfully into the next phase of your life. Please always remember that no matter how successful you become in life, be nice. Will Farrell once said, you will never truly be successful until you learn to get beyond yourself. Empathy and kindness are the true signs of emotional intelligence. As you graduate today, look around, take it all in as you will one day look back as I have and treasure these experiences, these friendships, and the lessons you learn. Thank you. The International Baccalaureate Program's Learner Profile defines what an IB student is and can be. They desire to create a student who is an inquirer, knowledgeable, a thinker, a communicator, principled, open-minded, caring, a risk taker, balanced, and reflective. If I think about the embodiment of these characteristics here at Fairmont Prep, it would be our salutatorian, Sophia Lander. Sophia's experiences traveling the world have made for an inquirer and knowledgeable young woman about different perspectives across the globe. Those perspectives have influenced her in the classroom as well as she has sought out diverse voices and experiences from which to learn. 
That desire for diversity points to her caring and balanced nature as well. She is not one to simply be fine with the status quo. She looks for things to have meaning for her and others. Sophia has a unique ability to connect with others without changing who she is. She's more than willing to share her opinions on, frankly, anything, but she is also invested in hearing the opinions of others in case she may have missed a viewpoint. Conscientious about her studies, Sophia gets her work done, often early, and to her best ability. But more importantly, Sophia is comfortable blazing her own path. She started out in our advanced science and engineering program and did quite well, but found the social sciences were calling her name. She made the difficult decision to leave ASEC to dive into the IB curriculum and give herself the flexibility to take a few extra humanities courses along the way. If there were a senior superlative for most likely to become a college professor, Sophia would have my vote. She just carries an air of lifelong learner about her. Sophia has been an active part of the Fairmont Prep community as well. She has participated in cross country and even played a season of soccer. Sophia has been successful with our speech and debate team doing congressional debate and collecting some accolades along the way. For the past few years, she's been working with a professor at Claremont McKenna College on educational policies in Indian states. Because of this research, Sophia has been published twice in the academic world. She also sits as the youngest member on the board of directors for congressional communities, which works to increase the communication between members of Congress and their constituents. We are proud of Sophia's accomplishments on campus and within the community at large. I can only imagine the contributions that she will make on an international scale shortly, but I know that Sophia will be leaving her mark soon. Congratulations to the Fairmont Preparatory Class of 2021 salutatorian, Sophia Landon. I had a terrible time writing this speech. I've never been much of a writer myself, and yet that's not exactly what made this speech so frustrating. Upon writing this speech, I found my mind filled with a countless of possible things that I could say. With the indentations of my fingers on the keyboard, I had the chance, or rather the power, to take any path that I wanted to. Writing this speech was so frustrating because it was uncertain. I wanted to know how my speech would end because then I could end the uncertainty of it. In my English class this past year, we read a line from a Didion essay. It's easy to see the beginning of things and harder to see the end. It struck me as odd as first because it's so obviously true. We all make up these stories in our heads about the beginning of things. I've mapped out my entire first week in college in my head, as I'm sure many of you have too. Beginnings are easy because they're less uncertain, because we have control over them. Endings, well, not so much. We can't possibly know in the vast uncertainty of our lives what the ends of all of the things that we will do be. And yet, we seem to be so not okay with the uncertainty of it all. But why? Why did I find myself longing over the ending of this speech? Why did we fuss over knowing the end of high school for most of our lives when we couldn't even possibly know how all, all of it would turn out? These questions have rattled me for much time and I've yet to come to a concise answer, but I think I found a theory that might have some promise. In 1953, a philosopher named Isaiah Berlin sat down at a lounge in All Souls College at Oxford University to ask a group of well-to-do professors and students a series of riddles. Riddles which all had seemingly obvious answers to them. But Berlin stood in awe as these scholars and minds of the time paced around the college debating theories after theories on how best to answer the riddles. By the end of the night, none had produced a single correct answer. Berlin went back that night to write his pinnacle essay, The Hedgehog and the Fox. Based off of the ancient Greek fable, Berlin classified the world into two woodland creatures, hedgehogs and foxes. Hedgehogs, like the scholars at Oxford, insisted that they could predict the future by using theories, ideology, and assumptions. Foxes, on the other hand, were content with uncertainty and therefore the wisest of all as they knew what the hedgehogs could never, that one, in fact, could never see the ends of things. Diddy and Berlin, they may be foxes, but as Berlin contended, the world is full of hedgehogs, as being a hedgehog is easier, safer, and most importantly, comfortable. Getting to the end of my speech was comfortable, 
and trying to tell ourselves that we could predict where we'd be in the next four years is comfortable. The answer to this seems that I and all of us today simply want to be hedgehogs, but perhaps we shouldn't. I've realized in writing this speech that being a hedgehog is, well, rather boring. Why would we ever want to see the ends of things? Why would we want our lives to be predictable and certain? Every day, every step puts us into a different direction and is the creation of countless uncertainties, countless of ends and countless of beginnings. Think about this past year and a half in the pandemic. What's made it so difficult for me and a lot of other students is that it's forced us into a lifestyle without any of these uncertainties. The uncertainties ended when we woke up every morning to the same desk and the same Zoom class. The uncertainties ended when we couldn't meet new people or take on new assignments or activities. The uncertainty ended when we couldn't have any new experiences or try new things. I think most of us here could agree that we really don't want our lives to continue that way. So why would we ever want to live a life without uncertainty? Why would you want to be a hedgehog? I feel as if I've asked you a lot of questions here today, so I'll conclude my speech by giving you a simple answer. Be a fox. Be okay with uncertainty and not knowing the ends of things. We're at a point in our lives where we have the chance to do something different, something bold, and most importantly, something uncertain. You all are some of the smartest, kindest, most diverse and brilliant people I've ever known. And I know you are enough to deal with the discomfort of uncertainty. I believe that you have the power to be a fox. I want to thank the people who have empowered me throughout my life to be content with myself and uncertainty. To my teachers at prep and beyond, Thank you for giving me the space and the freedom to express my opinions and foster my ideas. Thank you to my friends like Elizabeth Fung, who has stuck through me with my anxieties and my worries about the future. Mom, Dad, thank you so much for teaching me to question all of the things that I was so certain about and for allowing me to dictate my own path. Thank you to the people who couldn't be here today to see me graduate high school, as you have given me the courage and the knowledge to know that no matter where my be beginnings and ends may be, that I really will be all right. And most importantly, thank you to everybody here today, whether we simply pass hellos at the, each other in the hallways or spent hours talking at lunch or after school. You all have been a part of my uncertain and unforgettable high school years. I hope that I've encouraged you all to embrace your inner fox and to live the life that you want to. You are more than prepared to deal with the uncertainty of life, and I really can't wait to see what all of you will do. But until then, congratulations to the Fairmont Preparatory Academy. We did it. Graduates, faculty, and families, I am so proud of each and every one of you from the class of 2021. It gives me so much joy to join with your teachers, parents, friends, and loved ones in congratulating you and wishing you success as you continue on to college and pursue your career paths. I've had the great honor to speak at all of our Fairmont graduation ceremonies, except for the three years when my wife and I were in Russia serving our two church missions. I wanna start with my favorite tradition of recognizing our legacy students who joined us at Fairmont during preschool or elementary school, first through sixth grades. That's up to 15 years ago. As we had to do last year at the first virtual ceremony, I will call out the grade you started at Fairmont and share your names and some photos from your time at Fairmont. My assistant and I have spent a lot of time going through all of our yearbooks and files and even contacted your parents for help to find these photos. So I hope you don't feel too embarrassed. Let's start with preschool. Preschoolers that started at Fairmont, stand up if you can. Alora Lindsay. Jack De Bruin. Arjun Singh. Myra McCants. Nicholas McHale, Velasis Dritopoulos, 
Harishri Savdarya Hitakshi Savdarya Jennifer Krasap Heather Ann George Sebastian Geraldo Natalie Bui Jack Peretta Christine Huang Ryan Zidral Earl Takeuchi Junior Kindergarten Daniel Lewis Emily Wynn Kindergartners Med Shivade Lauren Pettis Ethan Chen Daniel Callahan Those who started in first grade Christine Chen Dean Alamy Kaylin Ong Now second grade students, you can join them. Sophia Jansen Nima Lazeri Those who started in third grade Cordelia Loyo Emily Tai Rylan Patel Olga Harrison Melody Lee in fourth grade, Justin Liu, Isabella Bruinslot, Alexandria Kim, Ryan Roth, In Su Shin, fifth grade, Michael Lee. Isabella Park Stoles. And those of you that started in sixth grade. Joshua Sanchez. William Wu. Ryan Yi. Zhang Wan Ro. Ishika Kanaka. Now I would like to recognize all the rest of our wonderful students who joined us in seventh and eighth grades. And last but not least, those who joined us in ninth through 11th grade, please stand from wherever you are. As I transition into a more behind the scenes role after over 42 years leading Fairmont and continue handing over our full leadership to our president, Chad Jackson, I will avoid the normal promotion day long speech and just cut straight to my second favorite tradition of sharing the stories from your faculty and others that I have compiled. That may even embarrass a few of you. I do plan to continue for as long as I am able sharing these two graduation traditions at all of our future graduations. Let me start with these stories. Natalie Bowie, your fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Jones said, when both of my grandparents passed away in the same school year, you painted a beautiful drawing of two angels to give as a gift to my mom. She still has it displayed in her house and wants you to know how much it means to her. Thank you, Natalie. Dean Alamy. Mrs. Betts, your robotics instructor, shared that one day you asked me if you could wear a cape a cape for an eighth grader? Well, we were one of only five schools in all of California to be invited to the first Lego League Robotics Championship Tournament. And their project was about bats. You made Batman capes for all of the members of the team, and they wore them during the entire tournament. It worked. Your team looked so good that they were honored with the Judge's Award for the whole state of California. 
quite a feat. Dean, I also have seen that over your 12 years at Fairmont, your great attitude and willingness to step out of your comfort zone has won you and others a lot of awards and positive attention, including mine. Jack Peretta, Mrs. Bantz, added that you were also very involved in that eighth grade first Lego League robotics with a different mission for your team. She said, I always knew I could find you hunched over a workbench with Lego pieces surrounding you as you worked on your team's mission. You designed a great delivery system for your team to feed the animals. To this day, she said, I have it as an example of an attachment to a robot for our future historic Anaheim campus builders. I remember you on the baseball field too. That was really enjoyable. Maya Dang, our international junior high instructor, Mrs. Villegas, shared that you were in my class the year I was pregnant. One day near the end of my pregnancy, you turned in your math homework with a post-it note attached. It explained how happy and excited you were about my coming baby and how you and the rest of the class would totally understand if I wanted or needed to teach our lectures sitting down. You were so sweet. Annie Lou, Mrs. Villegas said, Annie, you were in my class the year I suggested to maintenance that my whiteboard should be moved higher up on the wall. You were not the tallest member of my class and had a difficult time trying to write answers anywhere on the upper half of the whiteboard during class time. You were, however, always such a good sport about it and always had a smile on your face. It seems to have helped you get really good at finding creative solutions to reach up on the whiteboard. Kenneth Yang, Katie Kitchen, one of our historic Anaheim campus coaches and Fairmont alumnus said, Kenneth, you attended one of my summer school classes for English and literature. You really enjoyed chatting with your new friend, William, in the class. You would sometimes get distracted and also distracted others. Nothing bad, just being social, of course. I decided to move your desk all the way up to the front so that if you wanted to talk to William, you would have to turn all the way around in your seat to see William. That day you told me, Mrs. Kitchen, it's so hard to have to keep turning around to talk to William. And I said, exactly. Instantly, I could see you saw the light bulb go off. And then you said to me, good thinking, Mrs. Kitchen. It was a pleasure to have you as a student and as a volleyball player. I can see those light bulbs have continued to go off for you. Ryan Roth, Coach Arias remembered, you were one of the top quarterbacks Anaheim Hills has ever had. Second only, of course, to your sister, Sherry. Nicholas McHale, everyone thought Nicky was the cool and collected guy. Says Mrs. Huang, you walked the halls at North Tustin like you owned the place. However, Mrs. Huang will never forget the time you referred to her as mommy in seventh grade English class. She said she hopes that you have since lived that down. Have you? Hitakshi and Hirashi Zabdaria. Mrs. Fraser, your first grade teacher said, you both were the first and only twins who switched places in her classes and she fell for it. Class began as always and Hirashi started asking some questions. I provided answers and went on. Then you had more questions, and I had a feeling that something was off when I heard giggling from those in the know. It was one of the funniest moments for everyone, and we were shocked that the trick worked. Kaylin Ong, Cynthia Frazier in first grade said, Kaylin, you always quietly assumed 
any task without expecting any validation or recognition of a job well done. It's no wonder you were valedictorian both at North Tustin and now at the prep. Mrs. Huang added that while you were quiet and shy in the classroom, you were always striving for perfection and extremely competitive on the soccer field. Even once giving a player a black eye, I'm sure it was an accident. Sophia Jansen, Christina June, she said she saw the Disney princess in you at that point and realized later that you didn't change a bit as you went on to play the most exquisite bell in our seventh grade musical, Beauty and the Beast. Mrs. Huang also remembers you as Belle in that wonderful musical and how you stole the show with your angelic voice, superb acting and beauty. She added that as an accomplished debater and someone so academically strong, you were also a bit clumsy at times. Do you remember when you almost lit someone's hair on fire in the science lab? I hope you and they survived. I hope you enjoyed this trip down memory lane. Please stay in touch with each other, with your teachers and administrators, and let us know how you're doing. And please keep my cell phone number in your cell phone so when I call you on your birthday, you will know it's me. Or conversely, not answer because you know it's me. I hope that's not the case. Thank you and have a great summer. I know you will have the greatest success in the future. Congratulations, class of 2021.
Hello, my name is Barry Drake and I am the Dean of Students. I am thrilled and honored to introduce the valedictorian for the class of 2021, Kaylin Ong. I have known Kaylin since she was in elementary at the North Tustin campus where she began her Fairmont journey in the first grade. It was obvious then that she would be successful at every level of her education. She received all A's and A pluses for her elementary and junior high classes. Kaylin won numerous awards in pentathlon and science fair and she was the valedictorian of the eighth grade class. When Kaylin came to the prep, I told several people I had no doubt she would be the valedictorian at the prep as well. Kaylin is the top of her class because she is extremely intelligent, disciplined, curious, and creative. She works hard, prioritizes, and pays incredible attention to detail. It's not all about the grades for Kaylin. She really wants to learn as well. But one quick note about her grades, in her four years here, Kaylin earned an A plus in 84% of her classes. That's amazing. For anyone to have a GPA of five, like Kaylin, it often means they only study and do nothing else. That is not the case with Kaylin. She has been involved in ASB, National Honor Society, captain and all league player on the soccer team, president of the Peace Ambassadors, vice president of the National Art Honor Society, she did internships at Boeing and Pomona College, and Kaylin was involved with all of these activities while completing the ASEP program and tackling the full ID diploma as well. There are a lot of reasons to, for people to be proud of Kaylin, but the reason I am most proud is she is a great person. Kaylin is kind, caring, friendly, and shows concern for everyone around her. She is a leader, role model, and a person of character. You may have noticed that I am standing next to a beautiful mural. Prep art teacher Heather Sudek and I asked Kaylin to paint a mural that would depict the culture here at the prep. As you can see, it's bright, colorful, smart, creative, and inclusive. Not only is it a wonderful depiction of life at Fairmont, it is also a true reflection of Kaylin and her abilities as well. Just like Kaylin was four years ago, the mural has been a wonderful gift to our campus. Kaylin will be attending Pomona College in the fall where she will be majoring in neuroscience and I would not be surprised to see her earn valedictorian there as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the valedictorian of the class of 2021, Kaylin Ong. Good afternoon to all the students, parents, and families who are able to join us for the class of 2021 graduation ceremony. I'd like to thank the Jackson family and Fairmont Preps administration for making Fairmont feel like home for the past 12 years. I'd also like to congratulate Sophia Lander, our salutatorian and my friend, who I've always had boundless respect and admiration for. I don't plan on standing up here and imparting my wisdom by any means, because really, how much wisdom can a 17 year old possibly have? And frankly, I've always seen myself like everyone else expectations and regrets, disappointments, and much more. Sometimes it's easier to look back and only remember the difficult moments that nobody would expect or ever see. And frankly, there have been more moments occupied by self-doubt than self-assurance over the past four years. But on the best days, I start to remember the good moments. Creating meaningful art or getting to play soccer and getting to watch basketball games and go to prom with my best friend. I realize that all of us deserve this kind of happiness, and I've recently begun to realize that happiness is being grateful. I'm so grateful to have been surrounded by a group of such brilliant, inquisitive, and driven people. To the outside, maybe this is just another highly accomplished group of students, but personally to me, I just see a group of friends and classmates who are unconditionally kind and caring and so genuine. I see a class of people I've grown up with and literally known since first grade. And yet, after all this time, I'm still learning from each and every one of you. I'm grateful for the support that Fairmont's faculty and staff has given me over the past four years. If I could, I would actually make this speech entirely about all of my teachers and how amazing they were. But for time's sake, I'll share just a few of the people and the things they do that have meant the most to me. To Coach Ruben, my very first high school soccer coach, who still says hi to me with a smile and asks me how I'm doing. 
to Mr. J, who I can count on to pinch my arm or dress code me or just give me a hug. To Mr. Foy, who's also the best soccer coach in the world and who has a sense of humor unlike anyone I've ever known. To Mr. Duxbury, who still asks me how soccer season is going and seeing him on the sidelines of my games meant the world to me. To Mr. Wheeler, who exudes a passion and a sense of self that I truly admire. To Mrs. Carrier for telling me that my art is amazing or unique, even when I know it's not. To Mrs. Sudak for helping me with my mural every step of the way. To Mrs. Leslie for her abundant wisdom and for being able to talk to me about anything. To Mr. Han for his witty humor and jokes that I will never get tired of and for always being a friend. I wanna thank our parents without whose unfaltering support tireless dedication and unconditional love, none of us could have achieved any of the milestones of our lives. I'd also like to thank my own family. To my mom who is selfless and kind and who has unironically been my best friend since day one. To my dad for his patience and wisdom and for being passionate about everything I'm passionate about. To my brother who I know cares about me more than anyone else will and who I can always trust. I'm incredibly grateful to everyone who supported me and believed in me, even when I didn't believe in myself. And looking back, I think it made all the difference to know that there were people supporting me. So to my class, remember to believe in yourself, believe in others, believe in a cause, or just believe in what you love, because that will make all the difference. Still, it's hard not to get emotional as this chapter of our lives comes to an end and another one begins. As Winnie the Pooh once said, how lucky am I to have something that makes saying goodbye so hard. Congratulations to the class of 2021. We did it. Dean Elamy. Varun Bonsil. Martand Bhagavatula. Isabella Bruinslot. Natalie Bui Daniel Callahan Jordan Carpenter Win Tan Chuk Chow Christine Chen Ethan Chen Yan Xing Chung Yun Ge Choi Jennifer Crisap, Aiden Daigle, Huen Tan Bai Dang, Mai Win Tan Dang, Jack De Bruin, Ivan Dombiak, Velasis Dritopoulos, Elizabeth Fung, Yin Ling Feng Kai Wen Fu Heather Ann George Sebastian Geraldo Michaela Glynn Jong Min Ha Olga Harrison Zi Ying He Christine Huang, Zi Ying Huang, Kayla Ishibashi, Sophia Jansen, Corey Johnson, Jacob Juarez, Ishika Kanaka, E. Yint Kant. Alexandria Kim Sophia Lander Min Tu Lei Che Lin Li Da Yong Li Melody Li Michael Li 
Morgan Levine, Daniel Lewis, Fang Yuan Yi Li, Xu Xian Lin, Xing Ye Lin, Alora Lindsay, Jia Lu. Justin Lu, Noa Ya Lu, Sen Lu, Zhuo Hui Lu, Cordelia Loyo, Lam Tui Tian Lu, Quan Boy Lu, Mo Mei Lu. Mu Shi Lu, Myra McCants, Nicholas McHale, Ong Kyo Min, Iman Mustafa, Hoda Mustafa, Yu Xing Mu. Shaya Pam Musika Puma, Nima Lazeri, An Ha No, Tuan Kian No, Emily Win, Hai Yuen Win, Hai Yan Win, Kan Tuan Win. Kwok Tin Win, Sai Min Kwan Win, Tuong Dao Cat Win, Kemdalem Obiamalu, Kaylin Ong, George Oyakilome, Brian Pantoha, Sung Jay Park. Yumin Park, Isabella Park Stoles, Jayu Patel, Rylan Patel, Sia Patel, Hao Yang Peng, Lauren Pettis, Kong Nia Fan. Min Nat Fan, Fong Mi Fung, Jack Peretta, Xuan Rui Qi, Jia Yi Qing, Eric Chu, Zi Ying Quan, Jun Ren. Alexis Rodriguez, Zhang Wan Ro, Ryan Roth, Carlos Sanchez, Joshua Sanchez, Harishri Subdaria, Hitakshi Subdaria, Amna Shafi. In Su Shin, Bed Shivade, Annalise Silvestri, Arjun Singh, Choi Nam Ali So, Ji Yoon Sun, Yi Xiang Sun, Zhang Tao Sun. Emily Tai, Earl Takeuchi, Hong Fong Tran, Mai An Trin, Lan Jie Tai Li, 
Matthew Alexander Tang, Anne Ling Vera, Chang Li Wang, Yubo Wang, William Wu, Mia Yamamoto, Christian Yang. Kenneth Yang, Lian Yang, Wei Chie Yan, Ryan Yi, Yi Man Zhao, Ryan Zhao, Han Yu Zhang, Han Jia Zhang. Shang Lun Zhang, Ting Yu Zhang, Zi Yuan Zhao, Xing Hao Zhou. In accordance with the Education Code of the State of California, I hereby certify the members of the class of 2021 as having successfully completed the course of study for high school graduation. Graduates. The tassel on the right side of your cap symbolizes your time as a student. I now ask you to move it to the left side to confirm your newfound graduate status. Once again, congratulations, class of 2021. To you and your families, thank you for joining us this evening.